Well, hey folks, first, let me just say, wow. <laughs> wow, this is so cool. Articulate just added a, a new feature in Storyline that's gonna change how you build accessible courses forever. So now built, built directly in the Storyline is an accessibility checker. So with just one click, it'll scan your entire project against key web accessibility guidelines, generate a, a detailed report highlighting all issues and guide you step-by-step step on how to address and fix them. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so I'm in story view and let's go ahead and launch the accessibility checker. Now you have a couple options for how you do it. Probably most common will be to come up here to the view tab on the ribbon, click view, and then you have your accessibility checker right here. Now another option before I open this up, and I actually like this one a lot, is down here at the very bottom of Storyline's UI, you can see that you have a current status of all of your issues. So I could click this and load the window. So what I like about this though, is as I'm building slide by slide, I get the uh, totals and I can maybe address these issues at the slide level one by one, or I can wait till I'm, you know, maybe halfway through the project, go in there and, and then go and make those, those changes. Whatever the workflow fits for you is, is totally fine. But I'm gonna go to the view tab, open up accessibility checker, and look at this. We've got this dashboard summary of all of our issues. And we have these neatly organized categories by WCAG guidelines and complexity. So starting from least complex all the way to the most complex, but all issues will include a warning and failure. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up level A. I'll click that. And that brings us into our issues panel. You can see all issues up top. And because I clicked the level A, my filter right here should be showing me just the level A issues, but I can obviously add additional issues or clear all filters altogether. Now, one last thing I'll point out here in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the filters, you also can address by issues that can be fixed with a single click or AI assistant if you have AI assistant. And then of course, some just always have to be fixed manually. I also like down here at the bottom where you can view by project, current scene, or current slide. Just like publishing, only you're fixing in this case. So I'll keep everything else uh, selected right here. And let's take a look at some options. So if I click this first one, what is it? Accessible video controls enabled. And if you look over here on the side, we have the title of the issue, and we also link directly to the specific guidelines that talk about audio control. That's fantastic. And then right below, we're talking about the impact on accessibility how to fix it, and we even give you some screenshots or detailed uh, instructions step-by-step step on how to fix this. Now, I really I really like this feature, right? Instead of, instead of having to memorize all of the accessibility rules first, I'm actually getting coached on accessibility while I'm actually building uh, my courses. It's kind of like having someone you know, tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Dave, do, you might want to check this out as you work. This is probably not going to work. Uh, there's no more wondering on my part, you know, as, did I miss something or is this actually accessible? I'm learning by doing, which makes learning accessibility feel a lot more accessible. So here we go. So let's go ahead and just look at this instance. So I can click review instance and that's going to pop open. Oh, there's the video. I recognize that video. Now, a couple things here. If I decided I don't want to add those controls, that's my, my choice. I don't want to add those even though I've been, it's recommended. I could just choose skip and remove this from the list. Or if I think, oh, you know what? Controls really would be super helpful. I'm gonna come up here and I can instantly jump to that place in the course. So this is really huge because you might be working on, on someone else's project on a team and you're not as familiar with it. Instead of having to hunt, every, you know, hunt through and go through every slide, every slide layer, uh, we'll take you right to that particular point. So I'll go ahead and just click video one and that's gonna jump me to that place in the course. I can just move this off to the side. And there we go. I've got the video right here. Now watch what happens when I fix this. I have got the video, the, what was the education? The education tells me to add the accessible video controls. I'll just move that over and watch what happens on this one right here when I fix it. I go to the options and there's my video controls right here. So I just need to add those. These are light, dark, and light. Won't matter which one I add. They still have the same uh, high contrast ratio. So I'll click light. And momentarily, this should disappear from our list. And that's one less item I have to, I have to worry about. Yep, gone. And that's how easy it is to make these changes. So let me look at a couple others real quick. Let me just look at some items that can be fixed 
uh, with a single click. Or let's take a look and see what AI Assistant can do for us. So we have custom alt text right here. Uh, which instance is it? I'm not sure. Oh, this is a lot. So this is a good one. And the reason being is that when you're building your course, you're probably using a lot of shapes and graphics. Now that you have the, the rounded rectangle tool, you'll probably use a lot of those. You'll also use a lot of uh, merge shapes, but you'll have these shapes on the slide. Let me come down to a bunch of re rectangles, for example. I know I have a lot in this course. Uh, there's some down here. So if I click one, this is just a cover, right? This is just a, a, an object. Now at the slide level, I could easily go in and, and manually remove this from the focus order. But in this case, it's gonna be a lot faster for me to tackle these right here from the accessibility checker. If I remove this from the uh, accessibility tools, it's gonna remove it from the list and I can just go through quickly and remove all these shapes from my course that are being at this point just included in the default focus order. And I, I could and I could do this at the slide level. It's just so much faster uh, to do it right here. Now in this case, I've got a picture of a character. Picture 10.png is not the best description right there. I do want her accessible, so I could either manually add my my alt text, or if I have an AI assistant subscription. Check this out, generate alt text. I get a little warning, it's temporarily processed by a third party, that is okay. I click yes, and that's going to generate my alt text for this particular uh, graphic. Yes, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna say apply, and then I can go to the next instance of all of my, my issues. So I could also use down here the next instance. Notice how it removed it again from my list. That's how easy it is to use this as a accessibility checker as a way to quickly go through and get your alt text updated for, for your projects. So let's just come back up here. I've got a lot of shapes in this course. I can bring that up and let's look at just a, a couple more right here. So let's say, uh, what do I have to do with manual fixes? So I've got textiles defined. So let me see right here, textiles defined. So I'm not using any text for heading. I know this course was built a, lot, a while ago, so I probably am not using heading. Let me review those instances right here. And so there's my heading right there for the title. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that welcome screen. And so the textiles are, uh, it's, we've had these for a while, but essentially these let you use uh, specific textiles like heading one, heading two, that are actually recognized by screen readers or assistant uh, technologies. So I just probably made this bigger, right? I'm probably using under home. I applied a heading to it, but it's not really a heading in terms of how screen readers are viewing this. This isn't something that's gonna be called out separately as a true heading. So this is another best practice in general, and I know my course doesn't have this set up, is I would wanna define this as a heading. So with it selected, we can come in here, and I may not wanna just apply that because that's the default heading one. So I'm gonna say update style from selection, and that's now my new heading one, and it disappears from the course. So again, what this is doing is not just helping you fix the issues, but it's helping you learn about making and designing more inclusive, accessible courses for your learners. And that's it, I just keep going through and making these choices. Again, there's my other knowledge check. If I come in here, I get this little side note. Now that I've already defined that this is a heading one, I can just come in and select heading one and look at that. It now applies that same styling. I probably have to do a little bit of adjustment here, but I can start to apply these headings now these semantic headings that are actually read by screen reader. So I'm getting educated on accessibility while I develop right here within, within Storyline. All right, so real quick, it's not gonna catch everything. No, no automated tool does, but it is a good starting point for making your, your courses work better for everyone. And I, I think the best part, you're, you're building more inclusive courses without it, without it feeling like a lot of extra work. All right, well, that's the new accessibility checker in Storyline, folks. Hope you find it helpful. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.